This episode is brought to you by Maestro Sausage, the only sausage we use at Hot Tongue. They produce sausages specifically with pizzerias in mind. And you can tell. So if your sausage isn't hitting all the right notes, let Maestro lead the way. Ladies and gents, Alex Coons here, bringing you a brand new episode of Pie to Pie here at Hot Tongue Pizza. This one with Brennan of Line Check and Got Your Back, Long Beach. Brennan has had a long career in the restaurant industry. That's why it's probably easy for him to host a podcast about food. He is doing a podcast called Line Check that is super fun. They have these things, front of house, back of house. They have this rad studio. They have a sick setup, and it's really easy to watch. We talk about his backyard supper club that he runs, what that's like, what working in the restaurant industry for 10-plus years was like. He came from La Cita, which is actually a restaurant that used the same designers as we did. If you check out La Cita, it's down in Chinatown. Shout out to Preen, one of the greatest design companies in all of Los Angeles, if not the world. Anyways, sometimes I meet somebody and it's just so easy to talk about the state of the industry, where we're at in the industry, and there's a lot of just back and forth about our thoughts, how things are working out, how things have worked, and you know our experiences inside of food establishments. It was... So nice to meet Brendan and talk about his podcast too, because the format and everything that he's doing just feels fresh, feels new, and it feels exciting. If you're thinking about getting started with a pop-up or thinking about how to do one of these backyard supper clubs, he talks a lot about you know where to start and how to do it. He even talks about a brand new app uh, in the episode that kind of helps curate these these events, these pop ups. They actually, I think, pay for all of your food somehow. Yes, I know it sounds crazy. Brennan explains it way better than I'm going to, but it was a very rad conversation. I really appreciate you coming all the way up here from LBC. It was a delight, and I hope to find myself in a backyard in Long Beach at a Got Your Back event soon. Brennan, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Brennan of Line Check and Got Your Back, LBC, the man, the myth, the legend. I don't do any of the production and all that. My cousin does that and, you know, the Instagram stuff, he knows all about that. I'm just like on the, the guy on the camera. So that's it. And that's it. You don't have but to deal everyone with... Everyone sees my fucking face, so, you know... <laughs> They're, they're going to be the one that's like, oh, you're you're the guy that does line check. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. me. And I'm still not used to it. It's kind of weird. Well, how long have you been doing the pod? A uh, little more than a year now. And why did you want to start a podcast? I mean, uh, you're ma- you're mainly talking to people in Long Beach too, yeah, right? Yeah, Long Beach. And then we're, we do LA too. Just depends on like who it is, I guess, or like what happens or if someone. We just like reach out. We're just like sticking to Long Beach because it's pretty easy right now because we never everybody and the list just keeps growing and growing and just never stops ending. And when I start, I'm like, I don't know if I know that many people. We drop an episode every single week. Well, how do you keep up with that? It's booking. Do you do all the booking? I do all the booking. Yeah? Yeah. But why did you want to start Uh, a podcast? So we started it because we were originally going to do like low key spots, just like filming on our phones. Like these are my favorite spots that no one really goes to like hole in the wall places in Long Beach. And then we were at this wine bar called Bouvons in Long Beach. And uh, one of the Psalms there was like, hey, you ever thought about doing a podcast? I'm like, no, never, because I don't even like to talk to people. <laughs> like, I'm a chef. I, I, I stay in the back. I don't want to come out and say what's up. I just want to cook, put my head down. And then, uh, and then he's like, you should think about it. And I was like, okay. And then my cousin, he has a studio already. He has cameras. He's been doing it for like a decade, you know, just like making content. And I was like, hey, you want to try a podcast? I'm like, sure. So uh, first episode, we just like set it up, DIY, just like this kind of. uh, It was a shittier studio back then. It was like not done up. Uh, We didn't have any lockers or anything like that. No like special effects or props. Um, And I had my girlfriend on it, uh, Sasha, and she's worked in the hospitality industry for like 10 years too as a front of house manager and server, Psalm and all that. Yeah. So we just talked about what we think about the hospitality industry and like pretty much what we talk about like in bed. <laughs> We're just like, oh, like I would do this differently or if I owned a restaurant, I'd do that. Or 
Uh, this is how we like service and stuff like that. And yeah, and we just kind of just talked about that stuff. And then next episode, I'm like, hey, homie, you want to come on the podcast? Like you're a bartender. You got roofied one night. You weighed 350 pounds. And then you realize that your life was like tanking because you just drink every day. And then you realize you have to stop drinking and then you decide to make a change in your life and then lose the 300 or whatever, like 250 pounds. Yeah, that's a and now you're Oprah and now episode. you're and now you're a bodybuilder. That was your second episode. Yeah, second episode. And that's a real story. Yeah, real story. Damn, that's like daytime. Emmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that guy and then just like other chefs that I knew him and just kind of just, you know, snowballed after that. And you've been you've been cooking for 12 plus years. Yeah. Are you still cooking? I'm still cooking. Where are you cooking right now? So I used to work at La Cita um, mm -hmm. in Chinatown yeah. for, I worked at Lhasa for two years and then La Cita for two years. People who designed La Cita designed Hot Tongue. I can see that. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. The, little, the lighting is yeah, great. It, dude, yeah, their, their lighting guy yeah. is a psychopath. Yeah, it's he's, a, it's, he's sick. Lighting is everything. It is. It really is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I left La Cita in last February and to start doing my own business pop-ups with my girlfriend. And she still works at La Cita as a server. And it's called Got Your Back LB. Right here. Got it. Um, so we do community events in Long Beach. And we had these, like, backyard events where there would be a DJ, vinyl DJ, like, three food vendors, like, chefs. Like, we had... Uh, Freaking Andrew Ponce, he's opened up a restaurant here in Silver Lake. He's uh, pop ups called the Tea. Now he has a restaurant now. What's the restaurant called? A Tea. Oh, a Tea. Yeah, he just opened like, I think last week. Damn. It was like on LA Taco. Yeah. But he did a pop up in our backyard, and then we had like another chef, and then another chef, and then uh, Sasha would curate the wine list, and then there'd be some kind of like art thing, could be like a ceramic workshop or like painting. And it was like an elevated backyard party for the summer. So we did that elevated every for sure. every month last summer. And I was working full time at La Cita at the same time. And we're just like, fuck, we're like burnt out. And I was like, but this is cool. Like everybody likes this, what we're doing. And then so as this like summer, last summer came along, we're like, OK, we're going to are we really going to like push this got your back thing? So we did it again. And then more focus on doing supper clubs, showcasing my food because I didn't cook the last summer because it was I was already cooking full time and then yeah. putting on these events. You know, I was doing like putting up furniture and decorations and all that. <laughs> so it takes at a the lot. events, yeah, yeah, that's like a lot. You know, setting up chairs and cleaning the backyard. Um, so we, I did that, and then now this year, since I don't work at La Cita anymore, is focusing more on my food and doing dinners, collaborations, kitchen takeovers. And then we did the backyard events last is summer. The, is the, the those community events? Is are those also called Got Your Back? Yeah, yeah. We call it the backyard. It's like that's how people know it's the backyard. There's a pool. Nice. And so last two summers ago, no one went in the pool because it's like, oh, we don't know, like about jumping in the pool. Then this summer, because it's really hot, like one person jumped in and they're just like sitting there. And then I was like, okay, that's okay to jump in the pool. And then everybody jumped in the pool, and it was like. Super fun. Everyone's super polite. Uh, nothing crazy happened, but it was just super cool. I like I have crazy photos of just like forty people just like sitting in a pool and then like drinking wine, and yeah, it's awesome. Sounds like a good yeah. time. So yeah, it's been really successful since I left La Cita and just you know doing a lot of kitchen takeovers. We just did one last weekend at Manjet. It's a French cafe slash wine bar in Long Beach, and it was really fun. Yeah. So you, that's you, for the full year, you've been just working, got your back? Mm -hmm. And you're doing pop-ups too? Yep, yeah. And where are you popping up? Uh, like we Alex's do, we, bar and stuff? No, no, I don't do that. <laughs> we, don't do, we don't like doing pop-ups like that because we realize that's not the style of service we want. And what kind of food people. is it? I cook Filipino food. I'm half Filipino. Okay. Uh, so I do like my own versions of Filipino food. Okay. Uh, it's, you know... We have such an abundance of different cultures here. Of course. It's like what I grew up with. You know, I love Vietnamese food, Thai food, Mexican food, and just like putting my own spin on things, but not really like calling it like, oh, this is my version of chicken adobo. It's like I just make things with flavors or whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, we we mostly like doing dinners. That's probably like just making our own restaurant in our backyard. I think that's... So like the chainsaw. Yeah, chainsaw. Yeah, that's pretty much what we kind of do. Yeah, yeah, like you have backyard supper clubs. Yeah, yeah. And do you do those weekly? No, as much as I would love to. No, we don't because Sasha still works. And 
I don't want to burn her out. <laughs> How many people are you having in your backyard? Uh, it depends on, we usually do like 25 to 35 tickets or sometimes it'll just be like 10 tickets, whatever we can sell. Okay. And then like what, what can you tell me how much how much it is? Um, so usually, usually we get? try to keep it cheap because our whole ethos is trying to make it accessible to, to the everyone, community, yeah. and we want people to have a good time and like and enjoy an experience that they you know can't afford at like other restaurants. Um, so we usually do like eighty bucks, and yeah. then we sell wine a la carte. Okay, so wines carte. on top. Yeah, if and you eight, want to. And eighty gets you what a three course three course four meal courses, four cor four yeah, course meal yeah family style. Oh, and nice. I Everything drops on the lot, table. I give a lot of food, too, just because I want to, I'm Filipino. And I then love to eat. Are, people, are people taking food to go? Uh, the first one I did, people did take food to go. But so have you, like, aligned it where you kind of know exactly, like, yeah, the sweet Yeah, everyone's, point? like, stuffed and, yeah. like, full and, you know, all that. It, it's interesting because, like, that concept, I feel like, one, is really great for Southern California because mm -hmm. you can do it year-round. Yeah. But... I just had a conversation about like what a pop-up allows you to do without the walls of a brick and mortar and you, especially even kitchen takeovers, yeah. it's like brand awareness, you're getting your food out there. A lot of the times you're making money that's not being maybe facilitated <laughs> yeah, in the way, as fuck. <laughs> uh, in the way that like you would have to with a brick uh, and mortar, but it's like to be able to do this for a year or two years, you have a proof of concept mm -hmm. and then you're able to take all of the people that have already had your food and put it into four walls. Yeah. And then like, it already feels familiar. And then like, they're getting a different iteration of it, but it's the same thing that you've, you've kind of already built up. Yeah. Where like, you know, the old story is you have a concept, you fucking sign a lease, you do a f fucking half a million dollar build out. And then no one knows who the fuck you are, yeah. you know? So it's like, I don't know the, the pop up or like the supper club is really just sounding real nice to it me. It is you know? nice. Like, I mean, we went to Austin, uh, like whatever, like the last month, and my friend moved over there, and he was telling me like what the scene is like here, and he's like, usually everyone just has like a pop up, and then all of a sudden, eaters like, oh, pop up opens brick and mortar, pop up opens food truck. And it's like that's how they all start because they gain that following and trust from the community from just being like a pop up at your favorite bar. And then all of a sudden they have a brick and mortar and like, damn, my favorite pop up has a fucking place now. That's tight. And you want to support that. And I yeah. also think that like there's an underdog story there that there everyone is, yeah. kind of attaches to. They they like that, yo, like we started with uh, a six by eight folding table and some like shit I bought at Home Depot. And like <laughs> yeah. that's how it started. And yeah. this is how it's going. And, you know, like to be able to have people that supported you along the whole ride and then see other people discover you. I think people, it's like falling in love with that yeah. band yeah, exactly. that had eight people that. <laughs> yeah. at their first yeah. show and you get to be like, fuck dude, now you're yeah. selling out arenas. I was there first. Yeah. You know, there's it's something like very like. beautiful about that. Also, I make the joke all the time that like now it seems like everyone and their, their cousin and sister, brother have a pop-up. Yeah, it's everyone like, has a pop-up. Yeah, now. it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's like thing. this is like what I do. I have this restaurant, I, I have a podcast, I work over here, <laughs> and then I also have a boba tea pop-up. You know what I <laughs> yeah, mean? Like yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely like street, street food, supper clubs. Mm -hmm. There's but, all different kinds of We styles, were talking about yeah. smorgasbord. Uh, I might be saying that wrong. I have a yeah, smorg smorgasbord. Yeah, smorgasbord. Uh, maybe like why the like the like the big crowds have kind of like veered off. I know it's not as mm -hmm. busy as it used to be because I think that the like pandemic. the pandemic. The yeah, pandemic. Yeah. I mean, it was huge in the pandemic because yeah. you wanted to go to an outdoor space. But even now, I don't think that it's like as novel mm -hmm. to go eat. Like to go to a night market like that. Yeah, yeah. You know? It definitely is not. I remember when like they had this was it six two six or something the Asian night yeah. market. Like I don't I haven't been to one in a long time, but those were like the things in twenty eighteen. Yeah, uh, everyone wanted to go to those, and I think that yeah I agree that style is is a little bit different. I think because there's too many choices and people don't like that many choices because you don't know what to get. Yeah, and I think just sitting down and having like one meal. 
and an experience. And I think that's what we're trying to do is like create an experience. It's, it's not just about the food. It's about the ambiance, like you said, the lighting in your own restaurant. It's about the music that you're playing. Like I make all the playlists like of the music that I love to listen to, you know, cause I want them to feel like this is my space and me and my girlfriend's space. And we're like trying to bring this out in the most representative way we can. Yeah, that's, without, without making it feel stuffy or like, or here's a white tablecloth and you need to dress up in a suit and tie. No, you don't need to do that. You can just come in sandals and freaking biking shorts and you know, whatever you want. And yeah. still, you're still gonna get treated the same way if you did at like a white tablecloth, like fine dining restaurant. And I think there's definitely an appeal to like going to somebody's backyard. Like there is, it's like, it not edgy, but it's like, it's kind of exciting. It's yeah, like and every, everyone knows adventure. how to go to a barbecue, right? Yeah. You know, you just come back, hang out. Oh, we got bottles of wine, pick whatever you want. Oh, let's share with everybody. Like, oh, I love that bottle or I got this one. You want to try this? And like, cool. Yeah, and there, there's not enough times where like you sit down with, you know, nine to 20 random people uh-huh. and like really share a meal together yeah, and like yeah. to be in that experience together there's something really beautiful about that mm. because everyone's so disconnected these days that like to get a bunch of like similar minded people who would want to do something mm-hmm. like that t- together and enjoy food at a big table together yeah, is 100%. pretty fucking rad no it's awesome if your sausage needs aren't hitting all the right notes then let maestro lead the way Maestro has been working closely with pizzerias for decades. They produce sausages designed specifically with pizzerias in mind. And you can tell, their Italian sausage crumbles look like they were handmade in your shop and they will taste that way as well. With over 80 years in business, family owned and operated, the family is incredible and so is their product. It's quality sausage with quality ingredients. Click the link in the show notes. A classical masterpiece awaits you. Back to the show. There's not many things that like live on through the years, but like Mm -hmm. going to a restaurant or a bar is like some of the oldest things that like humans still continue to do today. Because I think that at the end of the day, there is, it's bonding and it's connecting. And in a world where it feels like we're doing less of that, yeah, you know, and, and it's, yeah, and it's <laughs> yeah. kind of scary too <laughs> with the, I mean, I don't know about, I'm sure it's happening in Long Beach, but like the, the closures in the last two years oh, it yeah. has been really scary. And I think that like connecting and, and dining out and going to bars has all those things have changed, yeah. uh, with maybe it was the echo of COVID that took a little longer I, to I kind of so. show up. I mean, yeah, with like Odium. Yeah. Um, we can go more about yeah. that. But you know what I mean? Like I've heard that they just have been struggling ever since COVID and could never make it back. But I'm sure that's the same with many other restaurants too. They're like, you know, put a lot of money down, still trying to make it work, but it's been that four year mark and it's like, shit, we haven't like profited yet and we're still behind. Well, yeah, and I guess like, I get, I, for, for me owning Hot Tongue, the amount of changes that I've had to make I, I was owner of Purgatory mm-hmm. for eight years, and all, the only changes I really had to make were general changes, such as like, let's hire more staff, let's buy better ingredients, yeah. like the normal stuff. Uh, owning Hot Tongue for the last two and a half years, it's been constantly, how do I fucking, how, yeah. how am I moving and shaking and making sure that like, I'm making the changes that need to happen, and I think if you're not doing that anymore, like you're kind of, you're going to get fucked. You always have to adapt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like even creating a space in your backyard, like the, the, I, I could hear something like that. I'm going to hear, I, mm. I, I listen to that and it's like, okay, how can I, what can I do to create a, a I've already created this space, but what can I do to, to make maybe a special night? You know, it's like yeah. those, those you're kind of thinking things. about yeah, something all you, the time. Yeah, because you have to, because that's the problem with a brick and mortar. It can start feeling a little stale. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If you're going to have a dining room, you do have to create an experience, especially with everyone's attention span, kind of just fucking going everywhere else. Yeah. And I think the thing that makes people want to come back to a space is how you treat them. Of course. And making them feel special. At the end of the day, I do think that's why people come back. He's like, damn, they're super nice. The food was great. Uh, Like, you just become a regular, just like a coffee shop. Yeah, um, knowing someone's so. name, their yeah, order. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, you're right. The the old school, like when we were like just talking about, yeah, like, I heard uh, that is yeah, word, word, of, word mouth. of mouth. And and you're right. P- people don't remember like maybe the meal, but they'll always remember how they felt mm-hmm. when they came into the space. And you know, that I think gets looked over sometimes. I mean, customer service is. I think so. It's it's you know, there's more and more kiosks showing up uh-huh. in fast casual mm-hmm. places, and you're kind of losing that element. And it's like sometimes, sometimes it feels like people don't give a shit anyways because they come in and they're like to pick up their pizza and they're yeah. on their phone. And it's like, are I mean I'm, I'm being yeah. robbed of even having that experience yeah, with do they people. Even want that? Yeah. yeah, it's like it's you weird. know. Remember when fucking lifts came out? Oh yeah. And like, dude, it was like, yo, dude, this is the coolest thing ever. Like, you're talking to your lift driver, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like, man, this is so cool. They got lights and shit. And it's like, fast forward eight years, and it's like do you want to talk to your driver? And it's like, no, yeah. like you, you can pick like the, the, and then now they have cars that don't have a driver. Yeah, That's <laughs> what I'm saying, dude. Like there is no fucking driver anymore, yeah. dude. They took it's, her jobs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Uh, oh, well, like what is the, what's like the, the restaurant, um, like we, we talk about like the LA pizza community mm-hmm. really like coming together and like being pretty, pretty supportive of each other. Would you say that like Long Beach is a big place, but mm-hmm. also a small place? Yeah, it's big and small yeah. at the same time. I like, think, feel like they're just like subsections of food hubs. And then there's like some that just like don't have any food. Well, there's food that's mostly like hole in the wall. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's not getting attention. Um, but I think the community is starting to grow there with restaurants. Um, and there's a Big pizza scene. There's so much pizza in Long Beach. It's crazy. <laughs> like you had Waldo in here. Waldo. There's dude. a Speak Cheesy, which is a sourdough pizza. Jason, spot. I saw that you did the stage uh-huh. over there. And then uh, there's Little uh, Coyote. Little Coyote. There's La Paralachia. It's mm-hmm. been open for 20 years or whatever, 30 years. <laughs> I keep getting that wrong. Sorry. Um, and there's so many other spots there. Um, but they're all different styles of pizza, which is really cool. Yeah. Uh, Long Beach really loves their pizza. Um, Everyone loves but pizza. yeah, I think I was talking to my girlfriend I and mean, we always talk about everything together cause we want to open a business together. And, uh, there never used to be collaborations like before the pandemic, you know, like chef takeover or a collab with another restaurant. And I think that's starting to happen in the last like two years. And I think it's helping bringing business and community and awareness to supporting other businesses because like, oh, my two favorite pizza spots or my favorite Colombian restaurant, Selva and Speak Cheesy are doing a collab together. And that's fucking tight. And it helps bring like Speak Cheesy's following and then also Selva's following to this one spot to try like one once in a year thing. And I think that's what's really been happening, especially like in LA too and all over like collaborations. And I think that's the new thing right now. How have you gone about like doing a kitchen takeover? Do you do you know people personally? Do you go and talk to them? Like, uh, do you pitch an idea? Like, yo, I uh, want to like fucking get in that <laughs> kitchen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that'd be. Uh, usually, people pitch to me is what it seems so far. Like, we've done bar takeovers. We did one at Baby G in Long Beach. Uh, shout out to Gianna and Daniel. They're awesome. Uh, we did two there and they like asked us if we'd ever be down and we're like, hell yeah, like we want to do a kitchen takeover and they have like uh, little pizzas there and we just did like a raw bar takeover, something simple nice. and some oyster shooters. Uh, and then Sasha did like wine specials, half off bottles and it's super sick. Um, Damn. All right. Yeah. And then I haven't really pitched to anybody yet. I think it's because it's like we already have so many relationships and it's like who kind of fits within our like spectrum or of what we're trying to do. And we want to make sure we're careful on like who we collaborate with. Cause it's not like, Oh, we're just doing a collaboration. Like it doesn't mean anything. We want something to mean something that we have intention behind everything. Yeah. I think that's really important for us. So we're doing like a beer pairing in a beer garden at this brewery in Long Beach called ambitious L's. And they're super cool. They've always been super supportive of us. And I like love their beer. I've always been going there since they opened. And actually the owner is one of the owners is Filipino. And he came to my first pop up in like 2017, like my very first ever pop up, like a breakfast pop up. And he like liked my food and 
gave me his card That's and then awesome. I did a pop up there like uh, as brewery. And then so we always been like friends and all that. So we were finally like doing like a real like Kamayan 50 person dinner with Sick. beer pairings, all Filipino beers for Filipino American History Month. Damn, that's uh, tight. So, yeah, it's just like I think we just built so many relationships over the years and all the places we worked at and just like who's our fr our friends mostly and who we, who do we want to support and who wants to support us. And I think that's what we look at first and those things. What's what's the game plan to open up your own business? Um, we were saying like a, a two year mark two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. That's a, that seems like right on par. Uh, but I think now it's just intentional with what we're doing in the present and when something like comes up or the opportunity arises to see if we're ready or not to take that. And I think that's really what's important to us right now is just, yeah, being present and thoughtful what we're doing and the rest will follow. Yeah. Cause I don't want to rush into anything. It's like, Oh yeah, we found this space, but like, do we really like space or are we just desperate? Cause we want a space right now. It's like, no, like we've seen spots and we're just like, I don't think that'd really work. Not a great location, too expensive. Um, areas kind of like dying with foot traffic. So I think it's when it, when the time comes, I think it'll happen. You so know? you're, you're looking, you yeah. just haven't the timing or the place hasn't been right. Yeah. And you're looking for a second generation restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to build anything. Yeah, like no, that. fuck, dude. <laughs> uh, well, that's smart. In Long Beach. And then also at the same time, we're like, do we want to open a restaurant? Like with all these right. restaurants closing? And it's like, do we even want to open a restaurant in California? <laughs> Should we just move away and open a restaurant Man, somewhere that, else, that, you know? I have that conversation with uh, myself every day. Yeah, um, so it's a little scary, you know, obviously, like going into debt and, you know, opening a restaurant. But I think we're just passionate about what we're doing right now and we really we really love uh the long beach community and we're just all about them and so it would be it would make no sense to do all this work and then be like all right guys we're moving to michigan to open a restaurant i don't open know like you might be the hottest <laughs> shit though in fucking uh, uh i've heard great things about uh detroit, detroit yeah. detroit's incredible it's yeah. a great food city i mean yeah. I, and I, this was like this was like 10 years last time i was there but i was blown away mm -hmm. but like if you went yeah, to I like all the meals are like, is this cheaper? Yeah, dude, yeah. that's my friend yeah. had bought a house for like 15 grand. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this house is sick, dude. dude. And my dad wants to, he lives in Salt Lake City. He's not Mormon, by the way. Everyone asked me that. Um, but he wants to open a restaurant. That's there. a he disclaimer. In, yeah, he's he, not Mormon. <laughs> he's worked in restaurants like when he was younger. Why don't you go to Salt that? Lake? That place yeah. is like a fuck. That place is booming, dude. Yeah. It feels like a whole bunch of tech companies are yeah, moving there. Yeah, there is. But the downside, the reason why I would never open a restaurant there is the Mormons like put a curtain over everything. Like alcohol percentage is lower. If you have a bar in your restaurant, you have to ha literally have a curtain over the bar so people like kids don't see that there's a bar. Oh, really? Yeah. And then also you can't go to a restaurant and order a drink until you've ordered food first. Is that in only in Salt Lake or in all of Utah? All of Utah. Oh my God. And then on Sundays you can't buy alcohol. Okay. So like if we're trying to open like a water right. bar, it seems like all right. Do not go to Salt Lake, <laughs> but I don't know New Mexico, Arizona. Yeah, I heard Arizona's kind of popping off too right now. Ari dude, I, that's what I think about. My yeah. family in Arizona, and I know that if I opened up something mm -hmm. like this in Arizona, it would fucking crack. Yeah. It would like it would it would really yeah. hit. I it's know it's hard not hit. to want to to just go yeah. somewhere else and open a place. Well, dude, Los Angeles, Long Beach, like the it's. LA County like you mecca. just you, yeah because there's so many options mm -hmm. for everything yeah. that like you could be the best at what you do and you could still close down yeah I mean that's shown yeah. the 75 plus restaurants that have closed in the last two years and counting like some of those restaurants were I'm getting goosebumps because like they were I, yeah. I, I'll miss them yeah. and they were I don't know like El Cochinita yeah yeah, yeah. I, I don't know all the problems that they were having. And I know, I know the problems that I'm having. And I just know that a lot of those problems I'm having right now, I wouldn't have elsewhere. Yeah. Um, so it is a tough decision, but at the same time, I, I love the piss ridden streets of Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, there's something like, I, I don't know if I'd ever be able to move away. Yeah. We, we have a homeless problem in Long Beach for sure. Um, a lot of heroin and addicts running around. Really? Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Like they opened up a boutique hotel. It's kind of, I would say that's similar to the Ace Hotel. Yeah. And they have a built-in restaurant there. It's uh, going to be owned by 
Phil Pretty and his sister Lauren Pretty from Heritage, the first Michelin star restaurant in Long Beach. Yeah. So they opened up a restaurant. Cool last name. Yeah, they opened up a, another restaurant inside the boutique hotel, but there's a, a church literally across the street that serves uh, food to homeless people and shelters and all that. But that whole block is just, it, the hotel always used to be like a crazy heroin, like drug place. It used to be? Place. Yeah. Like, ho- it was like blocked off wood, everything. My, Cause I used to work next door and mm-hmm. it was like, sketchy as you I never wanted to walk through that alley but it's just it still looks the same there's just now a boutique hotel so I was like I'm just wondering like how that's gonna like affect that area is it gonna make people want not to want to go there because there's still like a bunch of homeless people I know people are yeah. fucking weird they're like "Ooh, this or, is edgy yeah I'm gonna go to the edgy yeah hotel. or if it's like a facade like this isn't really happening here kind of thing. I think Long Beach is starting to do that right now. Yeah. It's like build these nice, you know, sky rises. And then there's this like homeless problem happening and this kind of ignore it. Well, I think that's what's happening all yeah. over Los Angeles yeah. is everyone just kind of the, ignores the it. Olympics. Yeah. It's like, Oh, we're building this thing here. And it's like, we're just going to move them somewhere else. You know, <laughs> that's, th- I'm, I am not excited. I'm for that. not excited. If either. I was going to leave Los Angeles, I'll tell you this. I would get the fuck too. out before 2028. <laughs> yeah. dude. I think my man, Matt will be gone yeah. way, way yeah. before that. dude. Yeah. He's fucking out of here that as well. Uh, I mean, they expect everyone to take a uh, public transportation to that's all the games. Horseshit. I was like, are you serious? That's horseshit. That's what never going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. And there's no way you're going to build that infrastructure yeah. and if in four years. And anyone that buys a ticket, like, they're all in their, like, Teslas or whatever cars they have. Uh, they're not going to They're like, public- I mean, they might as well Excuse be like, me, are you going to, you're making me take public transportation? There's going to be flying cars uh, yeah. in Los Angeles in 2028. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Crazy. Let's see. Hopefully... Either it all gets canceled or we're gone by then. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it, but it's going to be crazy. Um, don't plan on driving anywhere. Do When you do this, how many stage videos have you done? Uh, I think we've only done three. It's definitely been hard to book because obviously chefs are busy. Mm-hmm. Restaurants are busy. Uh, always something to do. So sometimes they don't like fall through or like something happens last minute. Like, oh, I got a catering order. Obviously... We want your business to make money. We're not going to be like, cancel your catering order so I could do this freaking shoot with you. Yeah. Um, so it's just, we've only done three. The first one was with Selva. It's a Colombian restaurant. He was on the 101 list for yeah. LA Times, uh, Chef Carlos. And then the second one was Speak Cheesy mm-hmm. with Jason Winters. Third one was Manjet with Alicia Kemper. Um, and do you do, does your cousin film all that? He films all and of it. And edits yeah. all of it? Yep. Yeah, it's, he's the, they're fun. He's the man behind the camera and does all of it, editing, sound, filming, and then we usually have like a, my brother will do other camera work for the stages. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's definitely fun. I like doing it. It's most, it's like meant to be an educational video for anyone that wants to stage, you know, don't really know how to stage and just give them some tips in there, like wash someone's knife after you're done using it and put it away yeah don't be an asshole <laughs> yeah don't be an asshole shut up and watch ask questions yeah uh, <laughs> simple things like you can nail stage as long as you don't do anything stupid yeah uh is like helping out the industry or like bringing people together something that you always wanted to do um because like with the i podcast actually i like, don't know honestly <laughs> My girlfriend's really passionate about, uh, she's always been like an event organizer, bring people together, help support community. And I have the same ethos. I just never really thought about it. Um, For me, I think just working in restaurants for such a long time, I really enjoyed helping, uh, teaching people on the line, like as a sous chef or a CDC and just guiding them. And I like giving a lot of metaphors to try to make things real simple for them, breaking it down like on how to do something. And so I remember someone gave me a compliment. It's like, wow, you should be like a teacher or something. You're really good at like teaching me. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Cool. And then, uh, yeah, so I just enjoy doing that. I think I just want to like teach people and uh, make things easier, help people out. That's yeah. All. Yeah. Well, you've done the stage thing. And then the other thing I really like that you do online check is uh, Battle of the Houses that I watched. Yeah. Whose idea was that? And like the one with Waldo and that other <laughs> Jojo. Yeah, yeah, and like then that's do you, the highest and, you, and then episode. and then you have a fucking ticket printer that's mm-hmm. actually printing out tickets. And I also love your set. Yeah. Like it really is I, just I, like I have to give it's credit to my cousin. Be, it's like perfect. Uh, Zarek. That was all his idea. I I think 
I don't remember how it started, but he did have something. The idea was the ticket machine. That was like, this is what we're starting off with. Like, but how are we going to present it? And it's like, let's do a game, um, front of house versus back of house. And so I think, so I'll explain it. So there's a ticket machine, a kitchen ticket machine. Ticket comes out. It's a question related to the restaurant industry pertaining to front of house and back of house stuff. First one to ring the bell gets to read the question to the other contestant. Uh, if they don't want to answer the question, if it's too too much cheese me, they have to take a shot at Fernet. Fernet's the industry standard, mm. obviously. Um, so yeah, it's just a fun game to bring up questions to light that I think we don't talk about in the industry. Um, I, there's definitely like, and it's it's cool too to have industry people in this show because a lot of the times articles come out, it's just like the chef, the owner. LA Times, there's no one really ever talking to like the dishwasher, the bartender, the the line cook, you know? Yeah. So it's just giving them a platform to speak. And I think that's really important because there's a lot of stuff that goes on that, you know, normal people don't realize what we go through. <laughs> it's like a bartender and a line cook. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, the, or the a server, yeah. The, f- the, those people are what make a restaurant Yeah, we're the, we're the backbone. Yeah, here. there's there's an idea, there's a conception of an idea, there's a build out, and then there is an execution of menu items, but everything after that is people. Mm-hmm. And that's why I just thought it was funny. It's like, I mean, it, I've worked in every position, so it's like, but, you know, front of house is always argue, or always uh, complaining yeah. about back of house, and it's the same way, like, yeah. or who closed last night? Like, you know, like, <laughs> this isn't funny. how you flip these vegetables. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I do it the right way. Yeah. Like, yeah, so it's, yeah. it was just, it's very entertaining uh-huh. because if you've ever worked in a kitchen, it's like, you can relate. AM or it's like, who, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> or it's like, whose team am I going to be yeah, on? Yeah. You know, and like, people always love to yeah. draw a line. Yeah. And I think definitely it is funny to, like, the whole point of it too is to to bring these questions to light, but also to bring them together and realize how we're all on the same team. Because I'm not trying to divide front of house and back of house. I'm trying to bring us together and make it fun. It's like, yeah, we do get heated. Like, yeah, front of house sucks and back of house is better, or front of house has it way easier yeah, than us. They do us. nothing. Yeah, they do nothing. And I, I think it just depends on the place that you're working at, and not you know. Not every place could be the same. There could be a restaurant that you work at. It's like everyone's just on the same page, helping out, very concisive. And, you know, it feels like you're a team. And I think a lot of people have not worked in restaurants like that. No. And to understand it yet, but they're still young and they maybe will go to one of those restaurants one day and understand how a real restaurant works. But it's, uh, yeah, so I like having different levels of industry professionals in there to like eat it makes the episode different you know well it's good too because i think the most beautiful thing about life is getting different perspectives and like to you never would have the perspective of what a a a server has to go through like you just see them going from table to table collecting tips Mm -hmm. if you're in the back as a line cook just fucking (laughs) yeah yeah you don't see that you don't see it yeah yeah, yeah. you're not but like i'd argue that like dude give me the give me the pan and the high heat and keep me so far away from customers because it's like dealing with people. Yeah. It, but it, it, it's like two different struggles. But in their own way. Yeah. yeah. And and to have to have those worlds collide is is that we need more of that. Yeah. Because you're never gonna put you're not gonna put your your lead server on the back line and and vice versa because your line cooks would be probably not that great. <laughs> yeah. With people. I think for the, a reason. The funniest one is. Uh, Someone said that back of house could run food for servers. And I thought that was funny. Could run food? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, mm. well, it depends on the concept too. Like with the build out, what's yeah. your like, what's your restaurant like? So it's just funny. Some of the, the questions that I ask and then some of the responses that I get. It's good. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> and then also the comments I get as well. Like, Oh, I'm sure because uh, then you got the whole peanut gallery. Yeah, what, what it's mostly uh, like line cook, line cook bros. Um, and they're like, oh, we don't listen to music in the kitchen. Never, ever, I would ever do that. Music in the kitchen is this laziness. Do you have a soul? Yeah. All, like, come on, bro. <laughs> it's not that serious. Yeah, exactly. Don't deep it, dude. <laughs> exactly. You trying to have some fun? Yeah. Or? I, I fucking, I just clean my line with a toothbrush <laughs> on my knees. 
<laughs> You've been watching too much yeah, bear, dude. I just yeah, it was like uh what was that brand that was popular? Chew Cooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like 2018, 2017. Yeah, I feel like it's mostly those kind of comments. We're trying to steer away that from that. We're trying to be everybody, you know, not yeah, just yeah, like yeah. just for the cooks. And they're like, I thought this was a cooking podcast only for chefs. I was like, no, we're hospitality. We do everybody. Just because I'm a cook doesn't mean that I'm just for cooks only. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in their bloodstones. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> bloodstones. Bloodstones. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like. You want to be niche, but you don't want to fucking be like not inclusive. Yes, I think that's exactly. what's nice about like you're, you're, because a restaurant. That, so much of this podcast has to do with pizza, and I'd like it to be a bit more mm -hmm. like a, a, a broader thing. Because whether you're whether you're in construction, which is fucking, I don't even understand that that or or design, or you're doing a, uh -huh. a, a supper club in your backyard. Uh, being an entrepreneur or, or working towards something, there's so many parallels in everything. Mm -hmm. And you can find you, you can find knowledge and gold in everyone's story. You know what I mean? Whether it be a dishwasher mm -hmm. uh, who just was a dishwasher. I mean, that's a fucking tough job. It is tough. You know, like, but we all need dishwashers. Go wash a fuck. Dude, yeah. go do an eight-hour dish. without a dishwasher. dishwasher. Like one service without a dishwasher is horrible. For everyone. Yes, for everyone for everybody. there. I mean, like you're you're there an the extra whole, three hours. Yeah. <laughs> We've I've been through that a lot of times. It's like, oh, dishwasher can't come today. All right, well, I guess I'll like jump in and wash dish and cook. And then for some reason, okay, sorry, <laughs> front of house, but whenever that happens, the servers do not make your life easier. When they're like, oh, dishwasher's down. Okay, I'm just gonna still stack plates however I want in the bus bin. <laughs> I was like, come on, guys. Let's do some, I mean, organization yeah. in the back. Organization. When you're, getting, yeah. when you're getting fucked with dishes at the end of the night, if everything's kind of like has a rhyme and a reason, mm -hmm. the job goes a lot quicker. Yeah, that sure does. We, we, I mean, this is a small, fast, casual spot, but we, I, we just got rid of all dishware. We just, I, I dropped prices mm -hmm. and I was just like, I'm not dealing with any more dishes than we have to. Yeah. I mean, I mean and, you, and running a restaurant, uh, Keeping a dishwasher is probably the hardest position it is hard. to keep. Yeah, it to sit in front of a sink for six to eight hours—that's a fucking wild time. It is a wild time. Have you ever done that? I my first job was dishwashing. I had two dish stations in the back, prep sink with all the pots and pans, and then the front with all the silverware, plates, and cups. Yeah. So I had to jump, run back and forth. I was like eighteen. Did uh, you love it? I I crushed it. Yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> The owner like taught me and he's like, this is like a game, you know, um, this is how you do it. And you want to be fast. I mean, I, I played sports all my entire life. So I think when I jumped into a kitchen, it was very, just like a game and just trying to be fast as I can be. And, you know, um, yeah. And I loved it. And then I just moved in the kitchen. Like I was only for a dishwasher for like three months. Cause they're like, this guy's fast. Like, let's throw him in the kitchen. See what happens. <laughs> well, it's nice that you worked at a place that where there was a progression, Yeah, you know, and you can work at spots like that, but sometimes like you just stay a dishwasher. Oh yeah. I fucking, I, I've I mean, had some guys that I'm like, when will I move up? I was like, I don't think that's I, I don't, in the cards I don't, for you. I'm sorry, dude. This might not be uh, it. Uh, I mean, I always felt dishes were like pretty therapeutic. Mm -hmm. I'm there by myself. I actually enjoy like, it. I'm spraying now. the yeah. Sometimes, um, there's no besides people. cooking. I'm just like, just throw it here. I got it. Just keep things. My hands aren't used to it as much as they used to be. Yeah, I get all soaked and soiled. Have you had a guest on your podcast that you were like very nervous about or couldn't believe that you actually they said yes? Um, not really. No, honestly. Uh, Are you, have you been, have you known or been friends with most people that have come on before uh, they came on? I've been like acquaintances or they know of me or I know of them. Yeah. And they kind of, and that's kind of like what it is, but I haven't had anyone. There is someone that I've been, that's, I'm trying to get, I haven't even reached out yet, but I'm trying to get Michael Simarusi from Providence. Um, just cause I worked with him at, uh, when he opened up the Ace Hotel restaurant mm -hmm. when I opened that place and I haven't talked to him since I left the place. <laughs> Is the Ace closing? It closed it's already. It's closed yeah. already. Um, but yeah, I just, my cousin also worked there with me. And he so he worked in restaurants as well when he was like 17. Yeah. And he just stopped cooking. He hates it now. Um, but <laughs> he's like, you got to like, you, you get uh, Simarusti on. I was like, fine, I'll like, I need to reach out. I just haven't done it. But I think that's like one guess. But other than that, 
Not really. Maybe Maddie Matheson. <laughs> That'd uh, be a sick episode. Because my cousin, I can see him in my those cousin lockers. works for Ruka. And oh, nice. He's he's friends with him, and they went on tier because he's like a on the Ruka team. Uh, Maddie Matheson. Yeah, is? Matheson on the is on the Ruka team, and like I don't know the if surf team, skateboard team, the team, uh, team brand ambassador, like brand ambassador, but. Uh, they go to Hawaii, stay at their house, and he would like cook for them all. Oh, that's tight. And he called Maddie's Patties. And then, um, so I think, I'm not sure if he's on the team anymore, but that could be someone that'd be pretty fun to talk to. And I think I just want to talk to him more about like how he started cooking and then his sobriety and all that, get at the craziness. So I have more like, I don't want to talk to him as like the persona. I'm not sure if he can do that or not. Yeah. You know, as like his personality, but more so like deep down grounded yeah. talk is what I would most like to talk about yeah so i think for like more po- famous chefs that's definitely what i want to lean more to is just like how you start like to inspire other cooks that they can like also do what they're doing you know yeah what is uh what is like the biggest piece of information that you felt like you've taken away in all the interviews that you've done um or it's did not you, easy did you already- <laughs> It's not easy. That's what every, everyone tells me that yeah. has a business. It's not easy. I'm like, yeah, I know that. And he's like, think about it if you really want to. I mean, it must be super helpful because it's like, I was like yeah, I, you, don't, like, you want to open up a yeah. restaurant. You're talking to a bunch, of, a bunch of people in the restaurant industry that either mm-hmm. are chefs, owners, cooks, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's not easy, yeah, it's I think, is a easy. pretty good. Uh, everybody. That's the take. Literally everybody. And they're like, it's not easy. That's literally the face that they make is like, oh, it's not easy. I'm like, yeah. I get that. I just did uh, the kitchen takeover and I went to Santa Monica Farmer's Market on Wednesday, which in Long Beach, they leave at like 6 a.m. to get there at like 8. It takes me two hours to get there. Jeez, dude. That's like a 12 mile drive. Yeah, and then I go to Laxey uh, to go get some other like dry goods and then drive back to Long Beach another hour and a half. um, And then, you know, prep. So I did like five, 16 hour days from like Wednesday to like Sunday. I was like, that's a glimpse. I was like up to like 9 p.m. too, or not up till like I went back and started prepping at 9 p.m. just to make sure I'm all set up for the next day. But I'm like, okay, this is kind of like what it would feel like to have a restaurant if we had a space. Like obviously I'd have like another line cook instead of working by myself yeah. <laughs> to help me out. Um, but it's, I had a great time. I was like, man, I miss, I miss working in a restaurant. Um, Cause I usually just do the supper clubs work by myself, but like this is the first time I like had a ticket machine coming out, you know, working the line, running the food, yeah, all that. So it was really, it's really interesting to see that. But I'm like the amount of work that it takes to do that, it's a lot, you know. And I yeah. kind of forgot about it. Not really. Like I've worked in, you know, in this industry for 13 years, so like I didn't forget. I know how to move and you know work. I just. Uh, there's something about it that's like you have to really fucking love it to do it, you know, and I do love it. <laughs> and I think I, I cook. Um, I was talking to someone. I was like a good question that I don't usually ask, but I've been thinking about asking is like, like, why do you cook? Like, why did you decide to do this in the first place? Is it because you want to become a famous chef? Um, do you do it because you just love the excitement about working in the line? Um, or like, why are you passionate about it? And I think if you do it because you love it, I think it stands out as like you as a person. Yeah. Um, and I, I really do love what I do and trying to cultivate my culture, Filipino heritage and through dishes I make. And I think that's really important to me. Yeah. And so I think that's what makes me just like happy and, you know, make people happy at the yeah. same time. Well, that's a good reason to cook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Personally, I think uh, I was just good at it. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like I, f- I felt like, oh man, I'm actually good at this, you know. And then it's like, how f- how much better can I make this? Yeah. And then it was, then then that journey began. Did you you ever make music or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to make music before I started cooking. Yeah, I, I mean, was going to school for music. I, I went know. to school for audio engineering. I did a trade school in Hollywood, and then oh. I was in multiple bands for like twelve yeah. years, and I really felt like. I felt that same connection and love for making a song mm-hmm. as I fell in love with what I could do with pizza and managing a team. Yeah. All those things I could do without a band, uh, which I loved having and being part of a group, but 
a lot of times you're relying on other musicians, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And so finding that parallel and being able to, to, to put that into food, I think was like, there was an aha moment and it was like, I can do all this other creative shit too, because restaurants are super creative. If you're in all aspects of it, whether it's like designs, your t-shirts, your mm -hmm. layout, your team, what your culture is going to be it's like, literally like a band, yeah. it, 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 yeah. the whole thing yeah. is and getting everything together. And I just found that it was like, what else can we do? You know, how, how, how far out can I take this? I mean, obviously with pizza, you kind of hit a, uh, you hit a wall, <laughs> but with dough, if you've ever fucked with bread, mm -hmm. you can keep, you can go on forever. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always different, yeah. always changing. I don't know. I don't know if I would, I don't know if I could say that I, I love, you, do you feel like you are a cook? Like you're a chef? You know, like I read this thing. I that's definitely like, have like imposter syndrome a lot of times. Yeah. Like, um, or I, I think I'm, I'm definitely a cook, obviously, but as a chef, there's different different um, skills you need I, to say that you're a chef, and there's a lot that goes with it. Um, and, you know, like everyone has their niche, like, oh, I make, uh, like I'm a pasta guy, or I'm a pizza guy, or I'm, you know, like a sushi guy, <laughs> whatever. Um, and I think that you, everyone says that you need to have all the skills to be a chef, and I think that is true to an extent. Like, I'm not a pasta guy. Like, I don't make pasta, but I know how to cook yeah. and different techniques and all that. And I think it's if you can lead a team, you can uh, cost out your ingredients and all that other stuff. There's a lot other stuff that goes with it than just, like, you know, just cooking. And I think chefs are, if they can do all that, I think they're a chef, you know. Because there's not many people that can do that, and I think what's really important to me is just like leading a team and uh, getting them on your page. Because right now staff retention is is incredibly hard. I don't have a restaurant, but I think about it all the time, like how um, how would I keep staff or how would I treat them? Because um, I'm not going to be an asshole chef. I'm going to treat everyone as equals. Well, I think there's an art there too, yeah. an art to stability, to your processes, to like your policy, to, to really give a shit and like try to stand, stand on those values mm -hmm. at all times. Yeah. You know, I always, I always say it's easy to say one thing on a Monday afternoon and then live by it on a Friday night during service. <laughs> yeah. But like, I do think that there's a huge art in the environment that you create outside of what anything looks like mm -hmm. or tastes like. And that's, that's really like, I think that's more valued now than it, it was is, coming up in kitchens so, where like, it didn't really matter. Didn't you, matter. you apologized later or you just got shit on and it was like, yeah, that guy's crazy. And you kind of like looked up to it and it was like, yeah, <laughs> it was like this weird thing. You're like, oh man, yeah, he treated me like shit, but like that was the best job I ever had. It was like, what the fuck? It's like, what are you talking about? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was funny back then. Uh, I loved it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this, it's like weird. It's like, uh, uh, I, yeah, it was just like, that's, it goes back to the true cook stuff, you know, just like loving that style of what it used to be and definitely it's not that anymore and i think that's why it's so much harder uh to have a restaurant also is just because of that um and there's obviously like a fine line you know with you know everyone can't just be yeah man it's cool whatever yeah, like yeah, of course there has, of course. You have yeah, to, you have to fuck there has it. to be a real good balance of how you run a restaurant and how you treat the staff and and i think it just comes down to respect, yes, you know, 100%. respecting each other. And also they have to respect you because it seems like no one wants to respect the owners these days. Well, it, because they get such a weird, bad rap. It's like, yeah. oh, this guy's fucking rich and blah, blah, blah. And it's yeah. like, maybe they're, maybe it's certain aspects. If it's a restaurant group and like, maybe there's an mm. absentee owner. I think those are people are easy targets yeah. because it's like, you can look at them and be like, this dude doesn't know how to make this dish. He mm. doesn't give a shit. Like maybe the chef does, but uh, it's gotta be, it, it, I, there's like a, that respect has to be a two way road. I always yeah. say that like, as long as you respect 
the time that we have together in between these four walls, I'm always going to respect mm -hmm. the time you have out of it. Whether you need time off, you're sick, you want to go on vacation, like that is your life. I'm never going to bother you. But like when, and, and I respect that because that's your time. Yeah. But in here, this is our time together and we have to have respect for one another. Yeah. And it's funny, like, I feel like people don't realize that they're getting paid still. To be at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Cause it's like, Oh, let's have a great time yeah, and have yeah. fun. I'm here with it, all my it's friends. Like, Hello, we I'm all went out last night. I know. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I just, yeah, it's definitely something I'm very fun. Uh, curious to get into once I open a place It's like, Hmm, how, what's the culture going to be like when I open a restaurant? <laughs> like, What's going to happen? Yeah. And I, yeah, I think there's a lot of things just like, yeah, you get paid to do this job. And then at the same time, you want to not feel like you're getting paid and do whatever you want. But um, it's not every place. And also, I feel like sense of urgency is dying now. Dude, that is an interview question. I was actually going to I was going to try to do a bit with you where mm -hmm. I fucking no. interview <laughs> you for the job. But one of the questions is, is like, explain to me what a sense of urgency is. And the the answers that I get are they're, you know, some are great, some are terrible, but you can't ask that question because somebody will give me the best answer I've ever heard. Like, it's like knowing when to, to be there when you're not. And like, mm -hmm. it, and then you get them in the kitchen and it's like, if you, there's two things you can't train, I say. It's like, you cannot train someone to care and you cannot train somebody sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's almost like it's ingrained in you. You were built with it or you were born with it. Yeah. But like, it's, it's like just walking faster yeah, to the oven faster. yeah or like or like moving You're like moving this faster, or having yeah. a fifth gear yeah or I saw, i'd gear. say you turn on the jets yeah. time to turn on the jets but some people yeah. do not have jets and i would almost like you said it's a dying thing yeah 90 percent of people that i 100 percent of people that i hired the end of the summer 99 percent had no sense of urgency yeah i haven't seen sense of urgency in at least like four years with like new cooks though, not with cooks that have been working for a long time. I'd say Is that new cooks. they're not cooks, being yelled at anymore? I, not being I think so. And I think it's also, we're scared to like, sh new chefs are scared to lose staff. So then when they're like a little bit more tighter that they don't want to lose those cooks, you know, because they don't know how to take it maybe. Yeah. Um, but it's funny because I, Lucita before, well, it was during the pandemic and I came back in like 21 or something like that. And everybody got like the second wave hit. Everyone got COVID. All the owners, chefs, most of the servers, all the line cooks. It was just me and one other person. And I think like a dishwasher. And we ran the kitchen for a whole entire week. Oh, and shit. I, and I turned into like the chef for the week. And uh, I felt like sense, wrote sense of urgency on a on t kitchen tape and I put it over the pass. And I was like, all right, guys, like, this is my kitchen now. Damn, that is like, a let, fucking, like, that is a let, bare let, episode, let, dude. I'm like, let's go. Like, it's just, I think people, you lead them by example and they see me that I'm like serious, like, okay, checking everything we got, what's the prep list like, um, telling everyone what to do. Sometimes people don't know what to do because they're like in their head, they might be stuck. Yeah. So I think leading, I'm just like a quarterback. You tell them you're going to go make rice right now and I'll do this while you do that. And right now that it's kind of like not every man for their, for their station, but that sense of urgency doesn't come just by themselves. You have to kind of point them in the direction. Hey, like remember 30 minutes till service. Okay. 10 minutes till service. Okay. Five minutes till service. And for some reason, maybe people just like being in the weeds too. <laughs> like they're like stations not set up. They're like, uh, it's whatever, man. Like, I'm just going to prep and no one likes order. being in yeah. the weeds, dude. But I feel like that's the thing now. Like, you know, just not setting up your station before service. That's like my pet peeve though, is I want everybody to be ready for service. That'll always, Weez, that'll always be, blast. that'll always be my pet peeve is being ready by service. Yeah. Everything's done ready. Cause no one wants, it's just easier. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also preparation is the name of the yeah. game in life being prepared mm -hmm. for like what comes next yeah. and when you're prepared you're gonna have a smooth service if you're not you're instantly in the weeds because you're starting behind yeah god i wish we i wish i i wish i had some video of sense of urgency yeah. but I, I got some good ones <laughs>
Um, definitely, if I would give a definition for sense of urgency, I, I would say that it's uh, moving with intention and with, uh, I was going to say sense of urgency. <laughs> I think moving with, with intention is good. Moving with intention and thought and staying a step ahead. Yeah. You know, because when you're moving, you're supposed to be doing something that doesn't put you behind but fits you forward. You know, it's like, what am I gonna do next? Okay, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the burner, pan's hot, I'm gonna turn around, uh, throw this in the oven. By the time I come back to my pan, it's hot, ready to sear something down. Okay, it's searing, blah, blah, blah. I go down my low boy, toss my salad, have it ready, put my plates down already for four orders, turn around, searing done, throw it in the oven, get it to temp, throw it back down, four plates, boom, 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 done. Just throw it out. It's like thinking ahead. Yeah. I think maybe some people aren't even there, though. It's That's really true. just like <clears throat> oils, <laughs> cooking. <laughs> now I'm turning around. It, it, it definitely takes... It's definitely a That's skill experience for sure. to, to work without working fast. And I think it happened that with me, um, with these new cooks, I was, I just like move so that so slow, but with intention that I don't even have to work fast and everything just comes out fast. Well, yeah, that's the old work smarter, not yeah, harder. Exactly. Do you feel that competition? Because I feel like they yeah, talk, they talk about, time. they talk about a positive, Positive toxicity? What is it? Positive toxicity. Yeah, I think so. Toxic positivity. Okay. That's what toxic it is. Uh, but there is like this underlying competition. Um, there always is. There always will be. But uh, you you feel that? Oh yeah, all the time. Um, and I think it's just because when you see someone doing something cool and you're like, wow, like it's a little bit of jealousy, and they want that, and you. I feel like it's, oh, they're taking business away from us. Yeah. It's like, but we're not. Like, at the end of the day, we should all just be, like, helping each other out, support each other. Like, I would go buy wine from you, and then you buy wine from me, and then we collaborate, and, you know, we combine our forces together to build the community stronger. But sometimes it's just not like that. As much as you would like it to be, it's not always going to be like that because people feel differently about other people all the time. Yeah, is that, like... It's jealousy, it's insecurity, it's all like the lower self that's yeah. like easy to give into. It, I think it's okay to feel all those emotions yeah. because they're, they're the easiest ones to feel, mm -hmm. but rising above it and realizing, especially in a city yeah. this big, that there's room for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then like the collaboration wave or like being happy for someone might be harder, but it's in the end gonna be better for everybody. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Even yeah. if you have to force yourself to be happy for somebody, because some, I think that it, this business too, or any kind of creative business, it's easy. It's easier to feel jealousy and insecurity because of how hard it is. So I'd say like, you're working so hard and you're barely keeping your head above water. And then somebody comes along and like, you have all these feelings about what you're doing yeah. and then you see some success. Yeah. And then instead of being happy for a person, maybe, you start saying some dumb shit. Yeah. It doesn't help you. No, it does not help. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because uh, yesterday I went on a run and I was listening to a podcast. I don't remember the name, but it was just about like compassion between people that may be wrongdoing or saying hurtful things. And just like, I think at the end of the day, it's just being compassionate and understanding towards other people. Yeah. And just, you know, not, they, they have, the right to feel the way they do. And, you know, as long as you combat them with compassion and understanding, you know, there's nothing they can really do about it. And you're like, oh, that sucks. They feel that way. I'm sorry for you. But, you know, we're all in the same boat. You know, this is a hard industry already as it is. And I think to, to like downplay everybody is like the wrong thing. It's just more so to uplift everybody. It's probably the most important part. Yeah, and then it's you, already hard. We don't need to make it any harder. Yeah, you don't need to be a hater. And yeah. in, in the in the end, you might you might feel good about like some shit you talked or like whatever, but you're, it's always gonna hurt you. Yeah, I, that was like one thing for me that took me a very long time. I I was very much like before COVID just like, whoa, was me, I'm working so hard. Like I've had this pizza, that shit sucks, mm -hmm. blah, blah, like, but it was all jealousy. Yeah, It was, everything was jealousy and insecurity. And you know, it's like, you, you think, you talk to, 
or listen to like Steve Jobs just talk about long plays and only worrying about himself, even though like behind closed doors, he, he, <laughs> he was kind of probably an asshole yeah, and worried yeah. about other people. But like, I just feel like it's much harder to, to, to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, you're the problem. And if you want to succeed, it has nothing to do with anyone around you. It's, it's going to be up to you and no one opening or doing a similar concept or being in a, the same band or working on a song that sounds similar or yeah. like whatever it is you think that is happening yeah. is only happening because you say it's yeah. happening. Yeah, and it's just the type of energy also, you know, like you're going to put that energy into feeling like that. That's why I do that. Put into the energy of your business yeah. to make it more successful or, you know, I just think, yeah, it's just wasted energy on yep. my part. It just It's exhausting. It's so exhausting to feel that way. I, I mean, obviously I felt that way too before and, you know, I try to remind myself to not feel that way, but, you know. Yeah, without without my wife it's easier said than uh, helping me through like a lot of things. She's just been it's been having a support system that's like, yeah. yo, this is us. Like, look at me. Like, we got this. Like, because it's not even just about like other people. It's about everything. You can get down about yeah. everything that's happening, especially in the restaurant industry. But it's it's again, it's wasted energy to worry about things you can't control. Yeah, and so. Shout out my wife, Jackie. Yeah, shout out to Sasha too. She's always there. That she made me listen to the podcast. <laughs> she made you listen yeah, to the, yeah. the, the podcast yeah, yeah, about yeah, compassion. Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude, I'm gonna need to. I'm gonna need to check that out. We're gonna need to get the details on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love podcasts yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, do you listen to a lot of podcasts? <laughs> no, no, I don't ever. I never listen. To do you podcasts. ever listen to yourself? No, I don't listen to my podcast. Have you? You've, you've never had to like go back and listen to uh, it for editing in purposes. The, in the beginning, I used to listen to it because sometimes the audio would be a little bit off. I'm like, hey, like. Uh, we need to fix the audio, re-upload it. And that's pretty much it. And then now we've just been on a train of just like the same consistency, but I never listen to them. The only time I listen to them is when I upload a, a reel. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. Do you like the sound of your voice? I used to not like it when I was younger, when I first got like a little tape recorder to make music. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's what I sound like. And then I started liking it more. And then now I'm pretty cool with it now. What you do in uh, music? Um, I wrote songs... Uh, play guitar, play piano, play bass. Had a couple bands uh, right after high school. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then I did producing after that, after the bands, and I started like making electronic music, DJing. Do you still do music? No, I wish. No, uh, there's no time no more. Yeah, I don't. Cause back then I would just have all my equipment out, had my studio, it's all set up and everything like that. I just walk in there and now. I don't have any room for a studio. Do you have all your equipment still? It's some of it's with my brother. Most of it's actually all with my brother. Yeah. <laughs> he has all my stuff now. Where's your brother? He lives in Long Beach. He's okay. a, he's just a barista, but he has a, he's a drummer. So he's been in a couple bands and but he's you like, he's like, off. he's nine years younger than me. No, I still have most of it. Yeah. I think the most I do right now is just play guitar. Yeah. Just have all my pedals and all that. Uh, born and raised in Long Beach. Yeah. 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 Maybe one day, dude, get the get all the equipment out and just start fucking. Yeah, I've I've met very many business owners and chefs that all play music. We should start a band. I'm like, yeah, just a sound sick, group. but then it'll never happen because they're all so busy. Yeah, it's like okay, with what time? Yeah, with what time? It's yeah. like we would never get together unless we did like a Zoom jam session or something. <laughs> All right, everyone ready? Yeah, uh, the yeah. click is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that'd be sick. But Just yeah, call the band Zoom I always, Zoom. I always talk Doom about Zoom. making music again, but in reality, no, probably will never do it again. Yeah. Unless I get rich and like have a lot of free time. Yeah, it's you definitely need some time yeah. to sit down and, and, and make music. Like your creative brain, too, is yeah. different when you're making music. Like you need time you need to not be thinking about anything else you just need to be in the zone yeah i don't have much of that time <laughs> no no and it I'm doesn't sound about like dishes. you're gonna have any more time no yeah but yeah i love music i think that's why i enjoy making playlists yeah it's like an extension of that uh just building playlists off of my personality and ambiance and for the guests to experience so well, there's a lot of creativity in a good playlist. Oh, I mean, I've, I have a friend, his name is Dan Goldstein, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a dad friend and it, I, he just, he curated a great 4th of July playlist. Mm -hmm. I had him and his kids over, but it was like, it was so eclectic. Yeah. It was like 
it was like I liked after listening to it. I like liked him even more. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, like that's what a playlist. Cool, like, yeah. Damn, that playlist went deep. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. it's like, is that an American uh-huh. song? It is, you know, it's like, but, uh, it's awesome. Yeah. I still love music. I don't think I'd ever want to make it again, but yeah. 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 I love a good playlist. Yeah. I make playlists for like working in the kitchen, driving, sad music. Dude. Now I just literally put on like nineties music. <laughs> oh, I'm like that. No, guy. I am. I am that guy too. I'm just that guy. It's like, uh, can we change it? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> You're listening to this again? It's like the same playlist. I, I, I was listening to one when I was prepping last week. It was called 90s Whims Gothic. Sick. Yeah, it was with, uh, like, I can't think of the name. Freaking, like. Power Man 5000? Yeah, that, Galaxy 500, mm-hmm. and uh, what's that band? Fuck. It's like a dr- shoegaze dream pop band. They're like. Mazzy Star? Well, yeah, that was in there, too. But it was, uh, Rob I, Zombie? There's that was also probably in there too. Um, can't think of it now, but yeah. All I just love I, I love like listening to those playlists, and then one song will come on. I'd be like, "Fuck!" I forgot about this one. The Sundays. Yeah, I haven't yeah, heard this Sundays. song in it yeah. forever. And yeah. then like I get the fucking tingle down my spine. Yeah. I'm right back in sixth grade again. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's life was chill back then. No, I yeah, had so many problems. There's definitely a nostalgic wave going on for myself too. <sighs> well, that's what. That's what people are selling these days, too. Uh-huh. They are. Um, what is a piece of advice that you would give to, one, somebody that wanted to start a podcast, and two, wanted to start popping up? Um, if you want to start a podcast, I would say that find your niche and what your ethos is going to be, what your podcast is going to be, and stick by it and be consistent and don't give up. Because there's a lot of times that I really wanted to stop doing the podcast because it's kind of exhausting to keep booking and then also be doing the other things that you have going on in your life. Um, And, you know, don't pay attention to the views. Don't pay attention to the algorithms on Instagram or whatever you post on. And just keep being consistent and the rest will follow. People will start to watch it. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have for it. Because, honestly, like... There was a time when I was looking at like Instagram, like how come this isn't getting any traction? How come we're not getting any followers and getting so in your head about it? Mm-hmm. And after a while, I stopped caring. I'm like, let's just keep doing it. Enjoy what you're doing. Be in the moment of your guests that's on and, you know, have a good time. And eventually people will start to listen to it. Because if you think too much about, you know, what other people think and, if your podcast is good and how come you're not getting listeners, then like, I think that's just going to not make it happen for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. 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 Especially if I guess, you and know, everything takes time, yeah. you know, it's uh, patience, just like you like yeah, not patience. rushing into a spot. Yeah, you know? exactly. It takes patience. Uh, so yeah, nothing happens overnight. And I think that's what I realized after probably like six months ago is just to have fun doing it. Yeah. Honestly, have fun doing everything, have fun cooking, have fun, talking to people and really uh, get down and to be as curious as you can be because a lot of times, you know, you don't get these guests you have on your podcast. And I think being curious is what makes me a better podcast host. And it's worked out pretty well. So I think curiosity just yeah. makes a better person. Yeah. You know, you're always looking for something else and maybe not always being stuck in being right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And honestly, when I started the podcast or just in general, like I'm a very introverted person and well, that's good. Speaking in front of people (laughs) has never been my niche. Like in college and high school, like I was so fucking nervous, like shaking, sweating. And definitely in the beginning stages of the podcast, I was like so nervous for some of them. And I eventually just started getting used to it. It takes time and practice. Um, Yeah. So I think don't be scared also, you know, have faith. <laughs> you gotta have yeah. faith. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. What was the last question? The last question is, uh, what, what's any advice to like somebody that w- would want to get into a pop-up or like at doing like a, like a backyard dinner service? Okay, cool. Actually, what's cool about that question is there's a, an app company that's debuting pretty soon. It's called Noshly. 
and they are going to be an app where they help chefs do pop-ups and private dinners at different spaces and it just makes it easier they pay for the food costs i know it sounds crazy they pay for the food costs they take care of the ticketing system if it's a ticketed dinner and they do all the pr for you and all you have to do is select the date of which place you want to do a pop-up at and your menu and then it gets approved you have to be an approved chef first and uh yeah so it takes all the like wow hard stuff that goes into starting a supper club starting a pop-up because it's very hard like if i didn't have my girlfriend you know how much harder it would be for me to fucking do menu development design uh posting doing flyers like she does all that all the front of house work and i just cook the food and like there's no way i think i would be able to do it without her yeah it takes a team to to and i honestly we wouldn't be where we're at if it wasn't for her too it's not just me and I think that a lot of chefs that are solo, it's extremely hard to get that advertising out there. Again, like not all chefs are like giant creative geniuses on like Canva and social media. Yeah. And maybe they're like a really talented cook and they just don't know how to get themselves out there. And I think Noshly is an app that they could definitely use, you know, to get their name out there and uh, get seen. So I think that, yeah, so that's Noshly that's on Instagram right now. And we're, we've been working with them just on like uh, talking about what needs to happen in order to make this app successful. Cause there's so many different <laughs> variables that go into it, you yeah. know? Um, so if anyone wanted to start a pop-up, I'd say that have fun with it. Um, don't be too harsh on yourself. I'd say start off on a small menu Definitely start off if you're working solo or you have one more person to design a menu that is easy for you to execute just in case it gets really crazy busy because you don't want people to wait forever for food. You want to be able to execute something that's going to you know not take a lot of time. So that depends on like that, what you make. So I wouldn't say like make a dish that has eight touch eight to 12 touches that doesn't sound efficient enough, you know, yeah. for if you're working by yourself. Um, so that's definitely advice I give everybody. I uh, remember that you need a POS system, <laughs> uh, not handwritten tickets. Yeah. Just, uh, handwritten tickets too, but just like have a system in place on how you're going to yeah. take orders, Execute. you know? Um, because it can get crazy sometimes. I've done so many pop-ups now that I've seen it all almost, and I've definitely almost been in the weeds um, with these situations. And yeah, and having an extra set of hands, definitely that's always gonna be helpful too, have someone take Don't order. Do it Don't yourself. do it solo, Yeah, because you're gonna create more of a mess for yourself um, in that moment. And you, you wanna make sure you put out the best food as possible. And yeah, definitely just make things easier for yourself and write a, write a list of everything you need, especially if it's off site, you know, salt. <laughs> yeah. The, the, salt, the hitters. Yeah. Gloves. Uh, yeah. And I think that's, there's so many things that, that go with pop-ups, uh, that is just like to think about. And those, those are definitely all the things that I always recommend is just make an efficient menu that's easy to execute, that still tastes delicious without compromising your skill set and uh, help and ticketing system. Preparation. Yeah, and preparation. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much.